Welcome back, Reds. As we approach the middle of January, many of the footballing headlines are about transfers. Who might leave the club? Who could come in? Can such and such do a job on loan between now and June? The truth is that Manchester United may well have the answer to future success already in their squad. Whatever happens to manager Eric Ten Hag between now and next season, and whoever is eventually put in charge of the transfer strategy, one thing is abundantly clear. They must build the revolution around Alejandro Garnacho. The academy graduate is everything United fans thought they were getting when they signed Anthony from Ajax for 81.3 millions of pounds in the summer of 2022. If that's a price marker, how much might Garnacho be worth in the future? During the 2-0 FA Cup victory at Wigan, we saw his full explosive repertoire and the disturbing news for opponents is that he's starting to find a devastating end product that works alongside the already established trickery and flair. Garnacho has the potential to become a United great. The issue is, do United and Ineos have enough about them to match his talent and ambition? We won't have long to find out. They'll have to make their intentions clear over the coming months, because there are already envious looks in Garnacho's direction from some of Europe's top Champions League clubs, who see a player not only for the now, but one that will excel and get better in the future. Players like Garnacho and Kabi Manu should be the future of Manchester United and shouldn't be allowed to leave, whatever the offer. Having joined at different times as youngsters, they're a subtle nod to the traditions of United's past, whilst also possessing the skill and presence to really make a mark in the modern game. It hasn't always been easy for Garnacho, who has had a couple of disciplinary issues on his path to being first-team regular. But his focus appears sharper now, and his performances on the pitch are re-highlighting the fuss that surrounded him when he made his debut against Chelsea in April 2022. Garnacho has also become Marcus Rashford's biggest problem. The Argentinian wizard is direct, tricky, poses a genuine goal threat, and is capable of dismantling the opposition defense at will. At the moment, on the opposite flank, and appearing mentally tired, Rashford seems to have lost his powers, cutting a forlorn figure, miles away from the high standards he set last season. It remains to be seen what will happen to Rashford, but Garnacho is quickly developing into United's most dangerous attacking asset. It's also easy to forget that he's only in his second season in the United side and his first campaign since signing a mega-money contract. If he's capable of being unbelievable consistently, why not play him as often as possible and shape the coming years around him? Why not indeed? I'm sure it's not escaped Ten Hag or the new 25% owners who are tasked with restoring United to greatness, again and again. Mason Greenwood learns chances of starring in Ratcliffe Man United era, as Chief makes big decision amid Barcelona rumors. Sir Jim Ratcliffe has made a decision on whether he will allow Mason Greenwood to play for Manchester United again amid the forward's impressive loan spell at Getafe, according to a transfer insider. Greenwood joined Getafe on a season-long loan in September, after Man United decided it would be best for him to continue his career away from Old Trafford. The Englishman had been charged with attempted rape, controlling behavior and assault, but these charges were subsequently dropped after key witnesses withdrew their involvement from the case. Since moving to Spain, Greenwood has emerged as a crucial player for Getafe, having registered five goals and four assists in 17 games so far. Getafe are interested in signing him permanently once his loan ends in the summer. There has even been speculation about a club record bid being submitted by Getafe, though that has yet to arrive. Amid the player's successful loan, there have also been suggestions he might be able to convince Man United on a big U-turn and force his way back into their first team. But according to journalist Ben Jacobs, that is unlikely to happen under the guidance of Ratcliffe. The British billionaire, who recently purchased a 25% stake in Man United from the Glazers, is currently planning to uphold the previous decision and sell Greenwood later this year, so he does not play for the club again. It is still too early to predict Mason Greenwood's next move. He is settled and scoring at Getafe, 
and I don't see much clarity until later in the year, Jacob said during an interview with Caught Offside. Manchester United's position last year was that Greenwood won't play for the club again, and it's not thought Jim Ratcliffe and Ineos have discussed any deviating from that plan to date. So, Ratcliffe is certainly aware and respectful of the club's investigation, and conscious multiple staff members voiced concerns about Greenwood returning to Carrington despite the Crown Prosecution Services announcing charges of attempted rape, controlling and coercive behavior and assault, occasioning actual bodily harm had been discontinued after a key witness withdrew their involvement in the case. Any potential Manchester United return will be a very sensitive topic and not one anyone commits to in January. Last year, it was made clear by multiple sources, pre-Ratcliffe, that Greenwood wouldn't play for the club again. To U-turn on that position will require far more than just a football department making that decision. It is true Getafe would be very open to making a permanent bid for Greenwood, but again, nothing is advanced at this point. Links with Real or Barcelona are normal. La Liga is seeing firsthand what Greenwood is capable of on the field but I doubt any clarity will emerge until later in the year. As Jacobs points out, it is not just Getafe who have been linked with a permanent move for the 22-year-old attacker. Indeed, he has been tipped to join one of Spain's three biggest clubs next, with Barcelona, Real Madrid, and Atletico Madrid all vying to complete a deal. On New Year's Day, it was claimed that Atleti are leading the race for Greenwood, although Barca have been backed to go to incredible lengths to convince him to join them instead. Meanwhile, Man United and Chelsea have been given encouragement in their pursuit of an electric Champions League ace, as he has spoken about his dream move. Again and again. Manchester United legend. Gary Neville insists Casemiro should have never been signed by his former club. The midfielder joined United in the summer of 2022 at the age of 30, following a 70 millions of pounds deal with Real Madrid and signed a four-year contract. The Brazil international has since put together a series of impressive performances and amassed a total of 11 goals and seven assists in 63 appearances. However, Neville still believes the experienced number six doesn't fit the Red Devils' long-term plans or the wage structure. And that is why the Sky Sports pundit is adamant that this United signing should have never gone through a good sporting director, a good owner, and a good head of recruitment. And that is also why the ex-England international believes the manager of a club, such as Eric Ten Hag, shouldn't have the final saying on signings as he is focused on the short term. Neville said on the latest edition of Stick to Football as per Skybet, Coming in from an owner's perspective, you employ a head of recruitment who you think is the best guy out there at spotting talent, that will bring value to your club. You've got a sporting director equally who will be thinking the same way. Their loyalty is to the club and to make sure we win games. A manager's job is purely to think about the immediate short term and getting results for himself. Casemiro is perfect example of a short term signing that is going to cost in the long term. That signing never should have gone through a good sporting director, a good owner, and a good head of recruitment. That signing should have never gone through, it should have been a veto. He doesn't fit the long term, the wage structure, the wages are crazy, and the length of contract is crazy. 